Hi Six Class, I thought I would give you a little uh, slideshow just before we come in on Thursday um, to talk about uh, where we've come from and where we're going to. So where we came from at the beginning of this project was mark making. And we looked at all the ways that your pencil can be used to make patterns and different tones, light and dark. When you bunch up patterns together, the tone gets darker and when you spread them out, they get lighter. You can use all sorts of different tools to make your marks like our mop or a big giant paintbrush or little tiny fine pens and pencils to make multiple, multiple marks, which then can grid into, get gridded into patterns. You can also make huge vortexes by just swirling your arm around like we did in class. So at the beginning we experimented in using the pencils in different ways to get spiky little lines and rubbing sideways on the page. Um, then last week we used, used a bit of charcoal which you can smudge with your fingers and make lovely soft blobby textures. And then we can use our charcoal and rubber to make really spiky, scary looking marks. So I suppose what we're looking at is with these pieces is trying to get a really lovely sense of the contrast that you can get with marks. You can get really dark, sharp lines or really soft, watery lines. And how the marks look on the page and where they're put on the page can sometimes suggest to us a picture. Like this kind of looks like a river with weeds. Or this piece, which looks kind of like a whole group of people standing around being a bit judgmental or something. But what I wanted to show you was how finished work, a big piece of finished artwork, can just simply be a bunch of marks together that maybe some parts of it have been rubbed out, like this one. And then there's other simple artworks, like this piece, which is those little crispy grass things that we find that are just simply dots and lines. And then there's this mountain piece, which I love, which is just simply a blobby mountain shape with a little bit of colour. And then the mountain is defined with these gorgeous black marks run around it. Again, there's a lovely white line joining these two rocks and the artist has put lovely intricate dots all over the bottom one and the top is kind of see-through. Again, there's that connection there with this very fine line between these two rocks and both of the rocks have a kind of different texture. You can sort of see the marks that are made. And here's how that work look, looks in a gallery. Again, just really simple, big forms with tiny patterns. So Rachel's going to talk to you this week about um, how you can make lovely little patterns like she does in her work and how sometimes maybe just taking a line for a walk and then repeating that over and over again can start to make a really interesting pattern. Sometimes just straight lines, tiny, tiny, tiny straight lines all built up in rows can make this really interesting piece of work. And then of course their placement on the page. The fact that all the marks are at the top of this page tells us that it's a snow scene and the artist has just created some trees with some marks. So we can create very simple graphic images like these ones that are just really bold and punchy or we can create really intricate pieces and that's kind of where I see our work going um, where you have lots of layers of marks and some of the marks are really pale and faded so they seem quite far away and then other marks are really strong and with a strong colour and they seem closer to us. So I think as we work through our pieces this week and next week we'll start to find where our pieces can really kind of start to jump off the, the page and create a sense of space and total dynamicness, if that's a word, uh, in our pieces. So this week we'll have paint again with us, but what we're going to try and focus on is little marks. And uh, Rachel is going to show you how she achieves little marks in her work. The other thing we can do is we can tear off some of the older work that we did and create layers of texture. You don't always have to paint onto a blank page. You can find stuff, other stuff to paint onto and make marks over and layer those marks up. We can even try uh, bringing back in some of the cardboard that we used. Do you remember the lovely cardboard textures we got earlier on in the project? And you can see this artist has used loads of different sources for her work. She's got a book page in there. There's a print of wallpaper. There's the little tiny squares that look like a building. So this week we want to focus on bringing some tiny uh, patterns and little graphic kind of marks into our huge pieces. We'll look at composition. 
We'll look at the contrast between darks and lights. We'll look at geometric patterns versus organic, loose, natural shapes. We'll look at maybe cutting holes in the paper. We'll look at collaging on other bits of work that we've done before. Um, and mainly we'll try and help you to find out what kind of marks you like making.